In the last video, we used proof by induction to show that De Moivre's theorem held true for a positive integer, where that integer was called n. And we saw that cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of n could be written as cos n theta plus i sine n theta. And please do watch that if you haven't seen it. This was the, this was the end result of De Moivre's theorem. We ended up with this scenario. What we're now going to show is that this holds true for a negative integer. And I'm going to state n is going to be equal to negative m, where m itself is a positive integer. So let's start this then. Perhaps watching the last video will certainly assist your understanding of this. What we'll have is cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of negative m. All I've done is swap n for negative m. Now, we know if we've got a negative index, we can write this as follows. We can write this as 1 over cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of positive m. We've shown that if n is, uh, we've got this value here of n and cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of n. This can be written now as cos n theta plus i sine n theta. So what I'm going to do now is write this and say that this is going to be equal to 1 over cos m theta plus i sine m theta. So that's where we've got. What we're going to do is just roll with this and take this and use some properties of complex numbers. What I'm going to do now is rewrite it down here and we're going to write cos m theta plus i sine m theta and we're going to multiply it by the complex conjugate and that complex conjugate is cos m theta minus i sine m theta. We looked um, before at realising complex numbers in FP1. Essentially, this is what we're doing here. So multiplying the top and bottom by the complex conjugate of cos m theta minus i sine m theta. Did I say m or n? m theta. This is the scenario that we've got. Now, let's consider what's going to happen here. If we uh, multiply this through, what we're going to have is the following. We can have cos squared m theta. We're going to have now the difference of squares. We're going to have now, and I'll write it out in full, minus i cos m theta sine m theta. And then we're going to have plus i cos m theta and then sine m theta. And we know from our previous work that this is going to disappear. Then what we're going to have is negative i squared sine squared m theta. And we know that negative i squared is going to give us a positive. That's quite clear. i squared is negative 1. Negative negative 1 gives us a positive. So we end up with positive sine squared m theta. So let's now, hopefully all of this will move down. In fact, we'll just move it anyway. Let's grab it all and move it down. And now on the top, what we're going to have, and I'll put a nice long denominator, uh, uh, bar here. So what we'll have now on the top is the following. We've got cos m theta minus i sine m theta. Let's just consider this bottom right here. We know that middle bit's cancelling out. Okay, So all of this is going to disappear. This is a difference of squares. That's going to go. All we're left with on the bottom is cos squared m theta plus sine squared m theta. And we know for any value of cos and sine, if we have sine squared x plus cos squared x, or vice versa, this is going to be equal to 1. So what we end up with now on the top is cos m theta minus i sine m theta all over 1. 
let's go back to our odd and even functions. To ensure that we have this in, in the form of De Moivre's theorem, we need to make this a plus right here. But we know that this can be written based on our work in a previous video, that that is an even function. So we can write this now as cos of negative m theta plus i sine of negative m theta. Therefore, we can quite clearly see from our last video on uh, when we proved this uh, for the positive integer n by induction, we can show that this also holds true for a negative integer where n is equal to negative m. We've quite clearly shown that that's true. So again, if you were asked to show this, you wouldn't have to go for this rigmarole. Hopefully though, me talking you through it will give you some idea. Cos theta plus i sine theta to negative m can be written as one over that value. We know from our work before that this can be written now as this. We multiply top and bottom by the complex conjugate cos m theta minus i m sine m theta. We get a difference of squares with this all cancelling out. We know one of the most basic trig identities, cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. And then we set the bottom to 1, then right in the top we just rewrite. So that shows it holds true for a negative integer. What we'll now do in the next video is just go through some basic examples of using De Moivre's theorem, but hopefully that's given you a bit more of an insight.